Hey world, Dan Brown here. It is March 15th, 2016. Today hosts perhaps the most important primaries for both Democrats and Republicans so far. And once again, this week, this weekend, Donald Trump has dominated the media narrative by any means necessary. It all started inside the University of Illinois Pavilion, where 10,000 or so people had gathered to see Donald Trump, not all of them Trump supporters. Then an abrupt announcement. For the safety of all the tens of thousands of people, that have gathered in and around the arena. Tonight's rally will be postponed until another day. Thank you very much for your attendance, and please go in peace. Instead, all hell broke loose. This is what happened today at the event before Chicago went off the rails tonight. Part of the problem and part of the reason it takes so long is Nobody wants to hurt each other anymore, right? And they're being politically correct the way they take them out. So it takes a little bit longer. And honestly, protesters, they realize it. They realize that there are no consequences to protesting anymore. There used to be consequences. There are none anymore. That's the way that Donald Trump has been talking about protesters at his events. That's the way that he has been directing his supporters at events to treat those protesters. If you want to know what led up to Chicago tonight, that was Donald Trump's display of leadership and calming the waters. When political scientists look at presidential candidates, they try to break down support trends along demographic lines so as to make better empirical sense of the big picture. For example, Hillary does well with women, Bernie does well with young people, Ted Cruz does well with evangelical Christians, Marco Rubio does well with people who make over $250,000 every year, etc. Who exactly are these people, though? Donald Trump supporters. I really want you to think about this. I'm going to ask you in a second here uh, to actually pause this video and uh, just, just think for a minute to yourself, what is the common thread among this group? Okay, go, go ahead and pause. Okay. Trump has been a real puzzle in this respect. I mean, yeah, okay, his rallies are very white. There might not be a fully proportionate number of attendees with college degrees, but no traditional demographic correlation has been strong enough uh, to be what we'd call predictive of Trump support. Men, women, Christians, non-religious, young, old, Trump's support is pretty scattered among all walks of the Republican Party's electorate anyway, which is part of what makes his candidacy so infuriating to his rivals, because how can you coordinate a takedown of something so amorphous, right? Who exactly could you target with your messaging? And more generally, our inability to classify Trump in traditional political terms is what has led to our kind of bewildered silence. I mean, lots of words have been said about Donald Trump. According to CNN Money, in 2015, Donald Trump received more nightly news coverage than any of his GOP rivals or of the Democratic candidates combined. But I think that most of those words can be pretty well summed up with just two words, and that's, hey, look. People who are concerned about Trump's rise are champing at the bit to talk about it, but if you're anything like me, those conversations often devolve into speaking emotionally more than constructively because we don't quite know what to say. Pogo Tribe All-Star Josh Fletcher, however, recently tweeted a link at me to an article published by Vox titled The Rise of American Authoritarianism, and it, it was really a, a, an aha moment for me. Researchers who study authoritarianism not established authoritarian states, mind you, but a certain voter profile, people who value authoritarian ideals, can place individuals on a spectrum based on how they answer four questions, uh, ostensibly about parenting. As it happens, this is the best demographic predictor we have as to whether or not any particular person is inclined to support Donald Trump. It's how they answer these four questions. Those who value respect for elders, obedience, being well-behaved, and good manners over independence, self-reliance, being considerate, and curiosity consistently support Donald Trump. 
For most of the 20th century, one's authoritarian values had no real bearing, no correlation to which political party they belonged to. But that began to change in the last realignment election, right, 1968, when Richard Nixon and the Republican Party embraced a silently anti-civil rights posture, emphasizing law and order and reducing crime in America's cities. This shift did not happen overnight, but over the the last 50 years, uh, authoritarians have self-sorted into the Republican Party until they've apparently now reached this critical mass where they have real control over the party. I mean, this article I'm referencing is pretty long and I'm simplifying things here a little bit, but its most important lesson that I think most people don't fully grasp is that what's happening around Donald Trump does not begin and end with Donald Trump. This isn't just some cult of personality that will fade into obscurity when its leader is soundly beaten in November. No, Trump didn't invent this kind of frenzy. He simply rattled awake a sleeping dragon dragon that will survive longer than his candidacy. So what exactly has Trump been able to leverage to rattle this dragon awake? Well, America's social fabric is changing faster now than ever before. We are in the midst of an immigration boom. The consensus conception of what constitutes a family in this country is evolving rapidly. We're coming to a more complex understanding of gender. And globalization means that spooky alien others feel closer than they ever have. Those who have taken for granted their automatic positions of supremacy because they're white, or they're Christian, or they're straight, or they're a man, are scared. They're scared that tomorrow's America might ask them to show any amount of respect for diversity, and they're digging in their heels. People who are scared that their bigoted chickens might come home to roost, they don't think critically. They cling to, wrap themselves in anything that projects strength and assures them that they won't need to change. They have ceded control of their actions to the reptile parts of their brains, and there's no reasoning with that. Our only option, people who are concerned concerned about the rise of Donald Trump. We need to out-organize and out-flank these scared little people. This year, in 2018, in 2020, in 2022, in every election year, until they grow sick and tired of consistently being losers. China, 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 China now, China, China, you know, China. I know China very well. I want more video responses from you guys. If you have a thought or a prompt or anything you want to say to me, upload a video to YouTube and email a link to danbrownuniverse at gmail.com. I want to feature more than I have been, but I need you to do your part right there too. I also, um, at the end of this week, want to upload a slightly more casual, kind of just question and answer video. So if you have any sort of question you want to ask me, um, tweet it at me. I'm at Delicious Steak on, on Twitter, um, probably this Thursday or Friday. I'm going to publish that. I want to get a little more content out more regularly here on Pogo Bat. But aside from that, thank you as always for watching. If you want to support the show, um, click on the Patreon link underneath me uh, and subscribe if you haven't already. And call your mother. She probably misses you, which I, I need to do, actually. Okay, thanks. Bye. <laughs>